Basketball is probably the most fiercely competitive intercollegiate sport. The final national rankings of all the major college teams are determined by a series of playoff tournaments. The winners of each of the big college conferences square off against top-ranked independents from all over the country to see who really is number one. This year's scene, Greensboro Coliseum, Greensboro, North Carolina. The four final teams, seven years running national champion UCLA, ranked number two, but clearly the team to be. Big eight winner, Kansas. Marquette, a strong independent with a 25 and four record and number one ranked North Carolina State coming off a spectacular 29 and one season. The first game of the semifinals pitted the Kansas Jayhawks against the Marquette Warriors in front of 15,829 fans at Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. The first half was a slow affair. Both teams unable to find the object of the game, the opponent's hoop. Both coaches try to settle their team's nerves. There were a few bright points. Subtle for Kansas. Lucas for Marquette. Greenlee for the Jayhawks. Lucas for the Warriors. Coach Ted Owens' Jayhawks took a 24-23 halftime lead mostly because their 9-for-25 chill period was shorter than Marquette's 9-for-28. Jayhawk Roger Morningstar's two field goals sandwiched around teammates Rick Suttle's timely baskets provided that one-point margin going into the locker room. Volatile coach Al McGuire of Marquette must have really given his players a piece of his mind, for the Warriors came back on the court for the second period, prepared to dictate the action of the game. Suttle single-handedly kept KU ahead for the first few minutes. But Lloyd Walton Steele off Tom Cavisto gave Marquette a go-ahead layup, 30 to 29. Marcus Washington looped in a key jumper. Bo Ellis picked up a free throw at the 15-minute mark. And Walton stole another pass 23 seconds later. The Jayhawks seemed to be losing their poise. Coach Owens tried to fire them up, but it was to no avail. Marcus Washington's 13 second half points, combined with a 24-18 Marquette rebounding advantage and nine Kansas turnovers, was the story of the second half. Coach McGuire concentrated on keeping fresh defensive men on Jayhawk guard Tom Cavisto. A lot of pressure on Cavisto. He's starting to tire. He should start turning the ball over. The Marquette tactic? To establish a smooth but confusing rhythm and force KU to play Marquette's game. And it worked. The Warriors slowly pulled ahead and won the game going away, 64-51. to 51. Washington, Lucas, and Tatum all ended the game for Marquette in double figures, while KU's Rick Suttle was high man for the game with 19 points. But the real attraction at Greensboro was now about to get underway. The dramatic matchup between the top two teams in the country, North Carolina State and UCLA. The Bruins were a dynasty, a legend. No one had ever won seven national basketball championships in a row before them, and UCLA was now going for its eighth. 
The Bruins had an amazing one-loss record going for them, stretching back over five years. They had intimidated many fine teams on this basis alone. But it was clear that the North Carolina State Wolfpack was not going to be intimidated. Seven foot four inch center Tom Burleson's attitude showed how fired up the team was. UCLA was led by All-American Bill Walton and was looking again to handle this North Carolina State team, which it had beaten so convincingly three months earlier, the Wolfpack's only loss. But it became clear right from the start that this game was going to be a different story. Among the dramatic matchups was Keith Wilkes and Dave Thompson, Bill Walton and Tom Burleson. And it was on these matchups that the game turned. The Pack matched UCLA point for point for the first six minutes of play. Walton's alert ball handling forced Burleson into foul trouble, upsetting the Wolfpack strategy. Playing inspired ball and collapsing state zone, UCLA pulled ahead, 19 to 14 at 8:39. All right, help back in there. He gets some long jumpers. He's not that good a shooter. Beat him up and down the floor now. Barson and Bart, Philip. But David Thompson sparked the pack to a sustained rally to go ahead of the fired up Bruins, shot of the period. But the Bruins spoiled their bid and took it themselves on a last second 20 footer to carry them into the locker room in a 35 all time. UCLA coach John Wood fired up his score and they spurted to 14 points in the opening four minutes of the second half while holding state to only three. Note the two crucial turnovers. Carolina State coach Norm Sloan, who used only seven players with great discretion, called a crucial timeout. His mainstay, Tom Burleson, was still in foul trouble and would have to handle the explosive Walton with kid gloves. Go ahead, square it up. You know, get the just break out deep and see what they do with you. Break deep, flare to one side, but go away from, from uh, Phillip. You know, he passes the ball in, start down the other side, try to square it up. On offense, the Wolfpack needed to penetrate the UCLan defense. To do that, they first had to hit from the outside, and hit they did. With 9-12 to play, State spurted to eight straight points in only a minute and 22 seconds to narrow UCLA's margin from 57-46 to 57-54. After the two teams traded four baskets, the spunky Thompson who collected 28 points to lead Wolfpack scoring in the game, put them ahead with a beautifully timed layup off an over-the-top pass from Stoddard at the 4.58 mark. 
And the crowd loved every minute of it. He was fouled on the play, missed the free throw, but Walton was called for invading the lane too soon, and Thompson didn't miss the second time. Then Bruin Dave Myers sank a basket at 4.35 to tie the game up at 63 all. By now, the crowd in all the sports world knew that this game was going to live up to their high expectations. Norm Sloan called his team together to consolidate their much improved position. Start trying to get it out. Now look, the guy that passes, don't just go lollipopping over the side. Pass the ball and shape, see where you should be. And maybe you should stay. And look, if they bring all three over, go all the way over. To his decision? Stall. And for two full minutes, stall they did. So did the Bruins. Both teams were looking for their best shot. But regulation time ended in a 65-65 tie. It was into overtime. And that meant a whole new ball game. North Carolina State picked up the tip off, but Thompson's jumper bounced off the rim. After a great save by Wilkes, the Bruins lost the ball out of bounds and then Burleson's turnaround gave the pack first blood. UCLA worked the ball to Greg Lee, who hit from 22 feet out to knock the score at 67 all. Burleson was fouled by Myers. But he missed his chance to salt it away. Stoddard stole the ball back, and State was looking for the clincher, but Burleson's last second effort fell short. The drama was heightened now beyond anyone's expectations. Double overtime in the NCAA semifinals between the nation's top two college teams. Both teams regrouped. If Coach Wooden's confidence in his seven-year national championship string was shaken, he didn't betray it. State again controlled the tip-off. After Thompson missed a long shot at 432, Walton was fouled by Burleson. The lanky All-American sank both ends of the one-and-one -one set, and now UCLA showed why they were perennial champions. After Burleson's shot was disallowed for goaltending, Walton hit a jumper at 350 for a four-point Bruin advantage. Mo Rivers was off target on the return for the Carolinians' cause, and Burleson lost the ball out of bounds. UCLA worked the ball to Keith Wilk, and the Wolfpack watched him finesse his way to a picture-perfect three-point play and a 74-67 edge, which seemed to ensure victory with only 3.27 to play. But the Wolf Pack poise, of which Norm Sloan was so proud, surfaced again in a time of real adversity. With the pressure mounting, little playmaker Monty Toe hit back-to-back -back free throws. UCLA's Tommy Curtis was fouled by the overeager toe, and he proceeded to put through the first of two tries from the line to maintain a six-point goal. But Stoddard snared the rebound. Coming down court in a desperate situation, Dave Thompson tipped his own shot back in at the 301 mark to draw within four points. The pack was back. 
The Bruins seemed to have lost control of the game, and they proceeded to lose the ball to Stoddard and Rivers with 1.57 to go. Burleson was playing with real fire and forced Walton into a foul. He hit the first point, but missed the second. Stoddard pulled it down. But the Wolfpack missed on three separate attempts. Ending with Monty Toe's miscue from the corner at 116. And this time, UCLA got the rebound. Myers was promptly fouled. And with a one and one coming up, he had a chance to put it on ice for the Bruins' eighth national championship in a row. He missed. Thompson cleared the boards and the Wolfpack drove down court. The feed went back to Thompson who hit a driving bank shot to put State in the lead 76-75 as the crowd roared its approval. The Bruins set up Lee for a clear shot from 15 feet, but he missed it. Wilkes rebounded, but was called for pushing Thompson to gain board position. Thompson made both of these all-important shots, and the pack had a 78-75 lead with only 34 seconds left. But it was Tom Burleson, appropriately, who capped the lid. With 27 seconds showing on the clock, he intercepted a lead of Walton Pack. State tried to stall, but Toe was fouled by Curtis. And his final two free throws put the game out of reach. And Greensboro Coliseum erupted in celebration. Final score in double overtime. North Carolina State 80, UCLA 77. Now, the finals. The high-flying Wolfpack against the stubborn Marquette Warriors. Marquette was now theoretically number two in the nation. So another 1-2 matchup was highly pleasing to the vocal home state crowd. And for most of the first half, the Warriors proved to be a match for the powerful Wolfpack. State bolted to an initial 10-2 lead in the first four minutes behind their usual starring combo of Thompson and Burleson. Marquette coach Al McGuire finally was able to restore order at 12-all. Five points in 33 seconds helped the Milwaukeeans keep pace. The league changed hands seven times in this fiercely competitive struggle for National College basketball supremacy. With only two minutes and 48 seconds to go in the first half, Marquette held a 28-27 advantage. But then, lightning struck, attracted by Coach McGuire. Warrior Marcus Washington was called for charging. McGuire lived up to his reputation for temper by protesting vehemently. He was rewarded for his effort by being charged with a technical foul. David Thompson, who was to be voted the tournament's outstanding player, hit all three charity tosses. 
and then Burleson scored on the technical position to turn a five-point play to North Carolina State's advantage. But McGuire was not to be denied. Less than a minute later, Warrior freshman Bo Ellis was called for goaltending on a Phil Spence attempt. McGuire charged the court again. The referees promptly awarded Spence the basket, a free throw, and a new possession, as the rules for technical fouls dictate. The Wolfpack alertly cashed in on three of these five windfall points. The combination of these gifts from the Marquette bench put State comfortably into the lead, going into the locker room 39-30. And they really took charge at the opening of the second period. Sparked by Mo Rivers and Monty Toe, State jumped to a shockingly quick 45-30 advantage in the first two minutes out of the locker room. By the 15 minutes left mark, the lead had grown to a staggering 52-33. But Marquette was not going to fold. The Warriors rallied strongly behind Marcus Washington and Lloyd Walton to cut the margin to 46-55 with 10-13 remaining. But State still led 59-47 at the eight-minute mark on a jumper by Mo Rivers and a tip-in by the speedy Dave Thompson. Marquette was shackled by the tenacious Wolfpack defense led by Rivers, Toe, and Stoddard, as well as the ever-present Thompson, which consistently kept Marquette out of effective scoring range. The Warriors won the rebounding derby 43-34 and pulled more turnovers 23-18, but it was in vain. As against UCLA two nights earlier, it was the Wolfpack's poise that really counted. Strongly pressured by Marquette's resurgence, as they watched a 19-point lead dwindle to nine, the Carolinians continued to play a smooth, even game of ball control. They forced the clock-conscious Milwaukeeans into several fouls, and in the highly charged atmosphere of the Pack Coliseum, they kept their cool. By now, the North Carolina State lead was just too much to overcome, even by Al McGuire's never-say-die attitude. Marquette was playing its heart out, but with an increasingly obvious sense of desperation. The triumphant crowd sensed the victory and counted the clock down for the champions, a sweet 76-64 conquest and undisputed position as number one. The North Carolina State Wolfpack had come a long way to get here. A spectacular 31 and one season climaxed at Greensboro. They avenged their only loss by defeating UCLA and ending the longest dynasty in college basketball. was on top. 